hardcore skeptic. Hey folks, just wanted to start this episode off by saying that this is a new format for the Hardcore Skeptic Examined series. Because I don't have the spare time to go through and do another series of interviews with various subjects, what I'm going to do is make the Hardcore Skeptic Examines and the What's the Deal segment on Brainstorm the same thing. So if you don't want to be subscribed to the short episodes of the Hardcore Skeptic Examines, then you can just listen to the Shift to Reason radio segments on Brainstorm uh, on the Brainstorm feed. Otherwise, this series will always have short episodes that I cover on Brainstorm, and they will be accompanied by blog posts as well as videos on our YouTube channel. Patrons of the Hardcore Skeptic Examine series will get these earlier than everybody else and as solo episodes first, and then they will come out as YouTube videos, and then they will become come out as segments on the Shift to Reason radio. So I just wanted to give you the heads up that this is a new format to this series. I had to change it because of the time constraints that are between work and life and podcasting, and this still gives me a chance to do Something that I really enjoy, which is to do a slightly deeper dive on certain subjects and to produce one show per month for this series. I apologize that that's all it's going to be, but I have to incorporate that into everything else. So with that, this is the Yellow Vests examination. I I go into a little bit of what happened in France, what's going on in France, and then a couple other countries. And then I do kind of focus on uh, Canada because Canada is where I'm from and this is where uh, we have a yellow vest movement here that's gaining quite a bit of traction. There has been more reports and more activity coming out all the time since this was recorded. So I think that uh, there's great sources for information on this stuff. Uh, There's a new episode of Canada land that recently came out. I will show, I will provide a link in the show notes for that as well as my other sources and maybe some new articles and stories about the yellow vests in Canada because this story keeps evolving and they are now an organization that is filled with hate and filled with just bigotry and misinformation and conspiracy theories. And they have an influence in Canadian culture right now. And they're representing a a populist movement in Canada. And it's not a, it's not a left-wing populist movement. It's a far right movement populist movement that is associated with white supremacists and Nazis and fascists of different stripes. So here's my segment on uh, the yellow vest movement. And I, uh, yeah, keep spreading facts about this stuff if you can, and please keep an, uh, an eye out for anything that you might want to share with your friends to try and debunk the yellow vest movement in Canada. If, if you want to share my segment, my piece with your friends, by all means do that. You might find the YouTube video more accessible because it won't have this preamble with that. I'm going to send you over to the segment after a promo for another podcast. I'm Dustin. And I'm Wesley. We host the Atheist Nomads Podcast. We're godless geeks who take a skeptical look at... Politics, religion, science, technology, and history. We also interview leaders in the atheist, skeptic, and humanist community. Check us out at AtheistNomads.com. That's AtheistNomads.com. What's the deal with Aquaman? What's the deal with decaf? What's the deal with lampshade? What's the deal with... 
What's the deal with the yellow vest movement? <laughs> oh yeah, you have a bee in your bonnet about that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know enough. I'm about so glad you said experience. something about it on Facebook, by the way, because I was driving on the Albert Street Bridge and I was like, "Who are all these fuckers?" Oh, uh-huh. Corey. T- Corey talked about this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Corey has a hate on for them. We, yeah. we, we know people who are like mutual friends on Facebook who right, eh? Yellow vesters. Yeah, like the yellow vest movement or movement des gilets jaunes. Uh, is a populist grassroots movement for economic justice that started in France in November of last year, 2018. It was mostly made of a, up of working class people, and the movement was known for its concerns over high fuel prices and the high cost of living, which made life more difficult for the working class. Uh, they called for and are still calling for fuel, lower fuel taxes, more taxation on the wealthy, minimum wage increases, and Macron's resignation from his role as president of France. In France, it is generally considered a leftist movement, but also has some people within it who claim to be on the right or who voted for far-right candidates. The protests are considered by many to be positive in nature and impact, calling those in power to account and disrupting things as much as necessary to make the government take notice of them and to do, to do change things, <laughs> to make things change. Uh, they wear the yellow vests as a symbol because since 2008 in France, by law, all motorists are required to have high vis vests in their vehicles while driving. They are reasonably inexpensive and easily recognizable. So make for an easy symbol. Uh, about the, the politics of the French movement, um, the, it's a broad movement with supporters from across the political spectrum, but a group of journalists looked at the Yellow Vest's 42 directives and came to the conclusion that about two-thirds of them were closer to the radical left positions than other political groups. And But about half of them could also be compatible with far-right viewpoints because they, populism happens on both sides of the political spectrum. Um. Almost all of the directives were about as far from centrists or liberals as one can get. <laughs> they were all extreme left or extreme right. Or, well, ex- extreme left for most of them. After looking at an article on Le Monde and uh, scrolling through the different directives and seeing which political leaders would be on the board with them, I would say that beyond anything, the French yellow vests French yellow vests are an anti-centrist movement that is specifically concerned with the troubles that working class people face. It's a uh, anti-neoliberalism in a lot of ways. Uh, of course, these the the similarity to my own views uh, seems to fade away once you go into other countries. <laughs> The, uh, in, well, Belgium isn't too bad. There isn't too, uh, different. Like they're still concerned with the same things as the French movement. Uh, apparently the prices of fuel in Belgium are even more expensive than in France. And then this, these carbon taxes are going to hit them, uh, even more. It said, uh, the article I read said that the price of fuel in Belgium was 2.1 times the price price of fuel in france wow so i mean uh, which is more expensive than it is here a lot (laughs) i'm sure so yeah it it really hurts people when the price of fuel goes up in those countries one thing i noted about belgium was that they actually have a law against hooliganism they called it (laughs) which is supposedly uh and supposed to deter protests violent protests but uh whether or not it's effective is still <laughs> being figured out, I guess. In the UK, uh, in London, the leader of the Yellow Vest movement there was a- arrested uh, a couple weeks ago before being released the next day and for like uttering threats and, uh-huh. and uh, kind of, I don't know, the things he was saying sounded like he was planning on starting a war with with the rest of the citizens. Um, 
And they seem to have a lot of far right anti-immigrant and pro-Brexit ideas in their Yellow Vest movement. Uh, There is a smaller movement right now in in London that is trying to take the, the symbol of the Yellow Vest back for the left side, left side of the political spectrum. It is. (laughs) (laughs) There are, like I said, like yellow vests in a number of countries and they all have different nuances and, and uh, vary in their political ideas. Mm. Uh, Obviously I got, I'm not a fan of the Canadian ones. (laughs) Tell us why. (laughs) Yeah. They are uh, anti-immigrant, pro-pipeline, anti-Trudeau. Uh, they tend to blame Justin Trudeau for every problem in society, and they want him tried for treason and hung. Uh, <laughs> but he can't be responsible for handsomeness. <laughs> you know what I mean? True. That's true. Just born that way, right? So handsome. <laughs> <laughs> They're also incredibly Islamophobic, like actually Islamophobic, not the... I criticize Islamic doctrine, but brown people are scary. Yeah, <laughs> They hate Jagmeet Singh and it's not because they actually know anything about him. They think he's a Muslim because oh. they don't know the difference between a Sikh and a Muslim. <sighs> <laughs> All they really know is that he's got brown skin and isn't Christian. Uh, the Canadian Yellow Vest movement has also been tied to leaders of various white supremacist groups. And fascist groups like the Sons of Odin. In their Facebook group, they regularly talk about killing Justin Trudeau and sharing fake news while complaining about non-white immigrants, indigenous people, and other people of color. How do you not get like arrested for uttering threats against? Well, oh, a anybody, but b <laughs> especially like the prime minister. I'm not sure how you avoid it, but so far, I mean, the RCMP is looking, is watching their. Oh, okay. Their Facebook group, but they haven't arrested anybody. I guess, do you need to have like a credible threat? Like I'm going to yeah. show up here one day and do this or if it's like something related to bombs, if you're just like randomly kill this person and without specifying your method, you can get away with <laughs> right. it? Is that- yeah, I think there's, right. yeah, I think it's stuff Noted. like that. <laughs> so essentially their Facebook group is a bullshit factory of racist shit bags <laughs> to complain about all things progressive, leftist or liberal. Uh, in Saskatchewan, we have had yellow vests that block roads with their diesel trucks in Estevan. In Regina, they walk around with anti-immigration flat signs. And in Weyburn, they stood on the side of the road and waved to supporters because Weyburn is a shitty town <laughs> and everybody fucking agrees with them. Uh, <laughs> there are some pages uh, devoted to keeping on top of uh, what's going on. There's the, uh, what is it? Uh, yellow vests exposed or Canadian yellow vests exposed Facebook page and Twitter account and the Canadian anti-racist coalition is uh, keeps an eye on them quite a bit. Uh, Beyond that, I think most places in the world have a mixture of right and left political ideas in their yellow vest movements and with the intent or possibly uh, the effect of changing things for the benefit of the working class and a couple places have to have accidentally or intentionally let the far right take it over completely and co-opt the message. The UK has a counter movement and we do not. <laughs> so Is there one in the states? There was nothing that I could find. Oh, cuz yeah, I hadn't heard anything either, but you got just They've got enough problems. <laughs> yeah. They're just yeah. they're, dead, they're saturated, they're done. Yeah. yeah. I guess they don't need yellow vests. They just They wear red hats. Yeah, yeah, red, red yeah, I hats. guess. Yeah, that's a okay, good point. Uh, yeah, I just like I truly don't understand how anybody is anti-immigrant in this country cuz like our immigration is merit-based and quite strict. Like yeah. again, after having conversations with somebody who was like whatever i sent them the like scoring system and said like i'm curious whether you would make it to canada and i did my <laughs> score based on what i knew about them I'm like i don't think you would actually right. so you're complaining about immigrants theoretically they're all better than you <laughs> on paper at least right so it's like right i feel like you could be against immigration if you're first nations 100 yeah. 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 percent. other than that i don't you know because but I, like even just the argument yeah. that well 
you know, my, I mean, my gra- grandfather was the first person in his family born in this country. Yeah. So he, because mom was pregnant with him on the ship over Right. Here. So yeah. like, no. <laughs> yeah. Like, with that. I better not I'm, be talking against immigrants because I mean. It's but you know what? I don't. Far and maybe I'm me. just, I just don't have an audience with them, but I don't hear them being the ones that complain. When they have the most right to complain. It's oh, yeah. No, I know. Yeah, they don't. But I'm just saying, like, it's yeah. just, like, other than First Nations yeah. people. Okay. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay. I mean, we're yeah. all pretty new immigrants. I yeah. mean, like, no, I, really yeah, no I'm, I'm referring to the people that I'm hearing that are constantly bitching about immigration. The people, like, uh, the, the people who are anti immigrant uh, don't, don't think that we're like immigrants, though. They think no. that we're Canadians and that this is Canadian yeah. land and they don't even acknowledge that it was ever indigenous land at all. No, and in, and even when you say like, well, you're all immigrants, like, well, that was back then, but now it's bad. Yeah, but it was like, like, it wasn't not even that 100 long years ago. ago. <laughs> it was like 70 <laughs> years ago. Like, we're less, a lot of people. Any different. Know. We still have a shit ton of space and, you know, like a pretty low population yeah. density well, for Does our a economy not is. rely on immigration? 100%. Yes. Like, yes. we don't have enough children yeah. to support, like, we need immigrants and that's just that so like what what is what is your alternative or what's your like yeah Yeah. i don't think because it's just you know like the person i was talking to he's like well their children don't speak english and they're all in the school so now nobody's gonna learn how to speak english properly because no i grew up in northeast calgary i can tell you straight up all children who move here what happens in my experience is people come here and as soon as your children kind of mix in with everyone you just i mean they keep some of their values and some of their family traditions and it's lovely and you get like the best curry but then you also get you know a moderating influence from canadian culture like it it mix it you know like so then you know they want to whatever not have an arranged marriage or whatever it may be. And then, and you know, it doesn't take very many generations before people are largely integrated, but still actually keep a nice, like yeah. a, a good, like their culture as, as well. Like it's most, nice. Yeah, it's as lovely. A lot of us have. Like and that's, still that's eat traditionally pierogies. how it's, like, yeah, exactly. Exactly how <laughs> is it's that been Canadian. Canada. Yeah. You know, exactly. I was the first one in my family born in Canada and I don't feel like I'm. Struggling to integrate. <laughs> right, eh? No, you're, you're I don't know, Mr. Okay. Dr. Pepper. That looks pretty Chilean oh, to me. Oh, geez. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess I didn't mention it. Uh, a lot of times when you uh, talk to these people or you listen to them, they're, they're ca- talking about Canadian values. They always like to do the, are, the dog whistle isn't of that Canadian values. acceptance and... <laughs> I feel like a lot of these people have just literally like never met a Muslim or never right. met, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. whereas like I grew up, I mean, like I said, being in the Northeast, I mean, you know, I ran for student council as vice president and the, my co, co-runner was, was a Muslim guy. And, right. you know, like it was just, we just, we, I don't know. This is just how it is. You just uh, integrate. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I've known lots of Muslims and lots of Sikhs and lots of Hindus. Yeah, I went and lots to Catholic of- schools. I knew a bunch of Catholics and like <laughs> people that were <laughs> right. close enough to Catholic. But even to- if you go to Catholic school, you know lots of immigrants. Of Filipinos. Holy crap! Right? Like, yeah. There's so know, many Catholic Filipinos. Pretty, they are they are supporting the Catholic white. Church. Man. Some of the uh, some of the Facebook Calgary, pages dude. that support the Saskatchewan and Canadian Yellow Vest movement are also like pretty bad with the conspiracy theories and like they they talk about George Soros and they have the globalist dog whistle are. and and like, like why does all of that shit just go hand in hand like why do you got to be a nutcase in like every facet of life cuz racism is pseudoscience and it's based on I guess yeah that okay that like, makes perfect sense never mind. I'll, <laughs> shut, I'll shut my damn mouth <laughs> no it's it's something that like those overt racists, those white supremacists, that's... They, yeah, they believe that we are better than yeah. you and... Yeah, I guess. Yeah, they they actually believe in the myth of genetic superiority. Well, because, like, nobody has a problem. Like, if if I came over here and I had an Australian accent and I said I was an immigrant, no one would be like, oh, I'm against immigrants, right? <laughs> right. Like, no one's against those immigrants, no, that's right. So it's, just, it's, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not, not an immigration thing. That against, right? Yeah, it's, it's not, not a immigrants not are taking our Irish. job thing. It's, I read an interesting article I don't like brown people. a few years ago now. It was that white people actually even get a special name if they're an immigrant. 
they call themselves you call you call yourself an expat if you're white and you're, uh, if you if you go yeah. to another country you, you're you, you know if you like I had lots of friends who called themselves expats I'm like oh I lived in, in Abu Dhabi for, you know for three years and my dad worked there and yeah we were expats I'm like what the fuck is that an expat's just a white immigrant yeah. <laughs> wow yeah that makes sense because white people have to have a special <laughs> white people get a special name special. for being immigrants <laughs> we're so boring we need to be special somehow you gotta be just special think about it yeah yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, it, it is largely like about the framing, right? Like, if we use this name for the white ones, then we can make them different. Yeah. We can say, oh, well, these well, immigrant are good. Means, like it's, it's like when, remember when Hurricane <laughs> Katrina happened and people were talking about the refugees coming out of out of New Orleans, right? Right. And, like, um, and, and everyone, all the Americans that like, were up in arms, like, we don't have refugees in, in, in the United States. Well, actually, no, this is what a refugee is. Like, you think of refugees as people you don't give a shit about, which is why you don't want to call people <laughs> right. refugees. But yeah. actually, refugees is a person who'd rather not fucking be there. Right? Yeah. They want to be at home. Uh, yeah. That's what that is. they can't be for whatever right. reason. So, yeah. Yeah, no, that word applies, and actually, you just need more compassion for the refugees, not <laughs> yeah. finding yeah. a different word for your refugees. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that would be interesting. All right, thanks for listening. For all the things, you can check out the show notes at thebrainstormpodcast.com or our website, brainstormblog.net. Thanks to our financial supporters, Kayla, Kim, Stephanie, Zach, the Utah Outcasts, Will, Aaron, Daryl, Bob, Glenn, Destin doesn't suck that much, Magnus, several species of small furry animals gathered together in a cave, Positively Skeptical, Rob, the Podunk Polymath, the Flying Spaghetti Monster Sauce Be Upon Him, Freethinker215, Larry, and Driffa. When we hit 20 patrons, I will stop reading all of them off and just read the skeptic level and above. If you want to join them and help the show grow, then you can do that at patreon.com slash brainstormpodcast. Or you can do a one-time donation at paypal.me slash brainstorm podcast. Or go get some stuff at tpublic.com slash stores slash brainstorm dash podcast dash gear. Thanks to Dave for our intro, my intro music here. And thanks to Jason Camo for the outro music. You can find his stuff at alaststateofmind.com. All music played is either with permission or under the SoCan license to play. For more information on SoCan, you can check out the music license info page on our website, brainstormblog.net. If you can't support us with cash, then a great way to help the show is to give us a rating, a thumbs up, or a fave on your podcatcher of choice. Join our Facebook group, like our page, follow us on Twitter, share the show, and spread the word. Thanks for listening, and remember, the truth matters.